So the paper I'm going to review today is clinical presentation, magnetic resonance, imaging features, and outcome in cats with lumbar degenerative intervertebral disc extrusion. Treat it with hemilaminectomy. This is from 2018 out of vet surge, and cases are from the UK. So just to start, this is not an open source paper, and that's why I'm reviewing it this way, and it's not going to be read out loud. I'll go ahead and get started. Looking at the abstract, the objective is to describe the clinical presentation, magnetic resonance imaging features, and outcome of cats treated with hemilaminectomy for intervertebral disc extrusion. The study design is a short case series, and there's six cats included in this study. Medical records were reviewed for signalment, onset, duration, severity of clinical signs, MRI features, surgical findings, and clinical outcomes with minimum post-operative follow-up of four weeks. On the results, their population included six cats with a median age of 8.6 years, consisting predominantly of males, which were five, and purebred cats, which were four. An acute onset and short duration of progressive clinical signs of myelopathy was the most common presentation. Spinal hyperesthesia was present in six cats. A large volume of extradural material was identified on MRI within the lumbar vertebral column in each cat, causing marked spinal cord compression. The most common sites affected were L23 and L67, both of which had two. Follow-up after hemilaminectomy was available in five cats. Four had normal voluntary motor function and one had recurrence of acute paraplegia, compromised nociception, and an extensive T2-weighted hyperintense intramedullary lesion on MRI. All four cats with perioperative urinary incontinence remained incontinence for at least one week, despite good voluntary motor function of pelvic limbs. In conclusion, intervertebral disc herniation was diagnosed by MRI in all six cats, most commonly at L23 and 67. Hemilaminectomy resulted in a good to excellent outcome in four of five cats. Clinical significance. Feline intervertebral disc extrusion can be diagnosed by MRI and carry a good prognosis after surgical decompression, although urinary continence may be delayed despite good pelvic limb voluntary motor function. Getting into the introduction, the study does do a good job going through the literature on intervertebral disc disease in cats. This disease is a common finding in cats on post-mortem exam, but is overall an uncommon cause of clinical signs in cats. Although the prevalence is unknown, it does appear to be less common compared to dogs and people, with the most recent yearly incidence being thought to be around 0.24% compared to 2% in dogs. There's far more literature on the outcome of dogs with intervertebral disc disease, so the goal of this paper was just to add to the current body of knowledge of intervertebral disc disease in cats. Records from their hospital were searched over a five-year period, although cats had to have an MRI to be included in the study. Sequences included T2-weighted dorsal three-dimensional gradient echo sequences called fiestas, likely used as their myelographic sequence, transverse T2-weighted images, and a gradient merge sequence. For those not familiar, merge combines multiple bipolar gradient echo formations using early echoes to increase signal to noise and later echoes to increase contrast of the image. The sequence is known by a variety of acronyms depending on the equipment vendor. For us, it's MFFE because we have a Phillips magnet, um, but merge is just a different types, type of gradient sequence, which some people prefer because of the increased signal and contrast. There was follow-up on the patients for at least four weeks following surgery, at least for their inclusion. And so I'm hoping that answers one of my questions after reading through the abstract. Looking at the results, the six cats included in the study represented 0.26% of the feline population at the hospital and 2.2% of neurofeline cases However, this does not take into account the number of cats that presented to the hospital that had intervertebral disc disease that never received a workup or treatment. Mean age was 8.6 years. 
Clinical signs were acute and progressive as discussed in the abstract in five of the cats. Most cats were non-ambulatory with one cat having blunted deep pain. Disc herniation was located at L23 and L67 in two cats and then L34 and L45 in one cat each, most being dispersed beyond the level of the disc. All this material retrieved from surgery was mineralized. Four cats had urinary incontinence prior to surgery and at least one week following surgery despite improved pelvic limb function. Between two and five weeks following surgery, five cats were followed out and were all improving, four of which had a good outcome, including improved continence. The sixth cat was euthanized due to lack of improvement. One of the five cats followed out was also euthanized due to progression of clinical signs. So for those of you following, 67% of cats had a fair to good outcome, at least long term. Looking at the discussion, this is contradicted as they state only one cat had a poor prognosis. This study does do a good job discussing how MRI might be helpful in determining prognosis following intervertebral disc herniation, referencing the Levine and Edo papers from 2009 and 2005, to where if there's no hyperintensity present, most patients will have a good prognosis, although these papers are looking at it in dogs. It's also important to note that in dogs, deep pain is directly correlated to prognosis, but we don't know if that's true in cats. And this is also highlighted in the discussion. It stands to reason that deep pain would correlate to a worse prognosis, but we just don't know. Something else worth mentioning is that all cats had lumbar intervertebral disc herniation, the majority of which had a single disc herniation. There is nothing in the paper about if there were disc degeneration at some of the other discs on MRI, but it is worth bringing up in this paper, as I would agree, lumbar disc herniations are more common in cats compared to thoracolumbar herniations. The paper does have limitations, mainly the retrospective nature of it, but my takeaway from this article is that if a cat has an intervertebral disc herniation, surgery is a viable option and recovery might be different than what is commonly observed in dogs. Questions I'm left with are, does surgery need to be performed in a lot of these cats or could they get better with medical management? And does deep pain alter the prognosis? Again, going back to the first question that I have, is surgery need to be performed? How many cats presented to this hospital that had disc herniation that never got worked up and therefore were not included in this study? That's what I have. Thank you.